In 2013, the manga Konokashi, translated to A Silent Voice, was released to critical praise from audiences and critics alike. A story of a young boy realizing all the terrible things he's done in the past and trying to make them right, particularly this one girl who he bullied the most in grade school for being deaf. It's a great and original idea that's presented in a not-so-original way. The manga sadly suffers from the cliché person-to-person -person narration that tells more than shows, but with how the characters are written, I guess I can't really think of any other way to deliver it. It's a good manga, it just could have been a great one. I read it back in 2015 and liked it a lot. When I heard that they make a movie off of it, I thought this was a good opportunity to fix the minor problems the manga has. Not only that, but it was being made by Kyoto Animation. Yes, that's perfect, I thought. They're made for this. The kings of feels. It's been a while since Kione made a sad show. In the past, they made shows about innocence and love and bad things happening to these innocent things and they practically made a directing style just for this. It's hard for me to pinpoint exactly what it is, but the best I can think of is that it's a collection of things. Of music, art style, angles, and of course story. Well, kind of. If you want to know the power of Kione, a good example would be Air. This show is not good. It's based off a visual novel, and it has the standard visual novel problems, plot holes and forced dramas with ideas that kind of go way out into unbelievable scenarios. But I do feel for them. The way the show is presented can make me suspend my disbelief and make me enjoy the current scenarios as they are unfolding. It's never until it's over that I look back at the problems. Again, it's not a good show, but how it's made, how it's directed, how it unfolds makes it emotional. It's the rare example of bad story but good directing. Kione found a way to make a show about a feather that heals people, a guy who turned into a crow, and a girl that's regressing her age to the point where she's borderline autistic feel sad. I feel for these characters and what they're going through. You may not feel the same way while watching this, but you can definitely see that effort is put into making you feel. Now just a year after the show aired, a movie version was made, not by Kione, but by Production IG. And here, the story is pretty much fixed. It's more grounded and realistic, still not that good, but much more believable. You might think that this one is the superior version, right? Well, no, because as you can see, the directing is just... not there. It's not just the animation, but also, I just don't feel for anyone, or anything for that matter. See what I mean by it's hard to explain? Something's missing here, I don't know what it is, but it's definitely lacking in what Kione brought to the show version. If the movie had Kione's directing, I think it would be all fixed for the better, but that just goes to show what Kione is capable of. A show that's unrealistic but presented in a way that makes me feel for everyone, and a movie with the same story done more realistically but in a way where I don't feel for everyone. Back to A Silent Voice, the manga was definitely a feel story, but unlike Kione, I can pinpoint why it was. They showed and told everyone's story, all the characters were fleshed out, some of them got chapters dedicated to them, others got a few pages, but either way, it's all there, with pretty much every character given a backstory and a reason for their actions, given in a cliche way. Like I said, your standard switching from narration, and I don't hate that, I just feel it's kinda wasted on such an original story. Great story, but terrible way to deliver it. I still like it, it's good, it just had the potential to be great. However, you could say that since it's a manga, there's not much you can do with that medium. And on the other hand, you could disagree, because there's a lot of great manga out there that can tell a story in a unique way. But on the other hand, those could be seen as too artsy for such a grounded story, and it could be distracting, but on the other hand, I was already distracted by the cliches in the manga, so I guess we just came full circle. Anyway, Kione has a history of feels, and since it's being adapted into a film, there's a chance to fix up the cliches. And right off the bat, in the movie, we have the who, but beyond that, they seem to fix it up. There's no narration. It starts off pretty accurate to the manga, with more showing and less telling. It's done perfectly, and overall a great adaptation of the backstory arc in the manga. And then... Yeah, about 30 minutes in, we come to a close. 
the beginning animation was so well made and so good, and then they just kind of go to your cliche anime narration. And it just kind of saturates it in my eyes. I will say that's not used that much in the movie, and while I wish they could get rid of the narration, you can tell they were trying to use as little of it as possible. Almost as if they wanted to show more than tell, but can't because of budget or something. Also, little side note, at least they ease into the narration. For the first 30 minutes, it's just the backstory and the bullying they did, and then when it's him in high school, he starts taunting the other students about how they might be thinking about him, and then he starts narrating. I like that, I like how when we first hear him, it's not so sudden, it's not a surprise. We know what the hell's going on, but it's not a surprise narration. I, 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 I don't know, I just, I, I just like it, I just like it. So anyway, we keep the narration cliche. Well, okay, it's an anime, and it's not that often, so I'll forgive it. What I can't forgive are the themes they seem to have opted out. The manga seem to have themes of change, guilt, and love. The movie takes out the first two and just focuses on the love part, which I'm actually not totally against. The manga, while it did have those three things, it seemed to occasionally forget the love part. So okay, the movie wants to fix that, but when you do that, you're left with things in the movie that come off as weird. When Ishida goes to see Nishiyama but is stopped by her little sister that lies and tells him that she's her boyfriend, his reaction in the movie comes off as not disappointing but shocking. Now that's fine, but in the manga his reaction is that he feels happy. She feels happy now because if she has a boyfriend she must be happy, so there's no reason for him to bother her anymore. He felt this way again when she met up with Sahara. I once joked to my friend that the beginning of this manga kind of feels like an anime version of My Name is Earl, a guy who feels guilty about what he's done in the past and wants to make up for it. The film never really addresses what he wants to do. Instead, it feels like he just wants to be with Hishima because they've both been through tough times. I know this might sound subjective, but on one hand you have a Ishida that wants to help Hishiyama because of what she's been through, and on the other hand you have one that wants to be with her because he feels connected to her. This might be just my opinion, but the manga Ishida just sounds more caring, while the anime version just kinda cuts out the middleman and makes him want to be with Nishima because he feels that they're similar. This would be fine if it wasn't for the fact that if you change the main interest of what he wants to do, but don't change everything else in the story, it makes the whole story feel like it's going nowhere. One of the biggest plot points in the manga was the movie. Throughout the whole manga, they were getting together to make a movie because Nagita was inspired to make one after he saw one with Ishida. Through this film is how we meet everyone and get to know them as people, what their interests are, what inspires them, and what's going on with them, how they feel about certain situations, and how they came to cope with them. You might think that this is just a cheap way to develop characters, as in the movie they just want to be friends and are driven simply by that. Personally, saying that out loud? It really seems like the latter is just more cliche in terms of anime, which is really weird seeing that it's a film that you can really tell is trying to break cliches. Also, when you take out a plot point that is made to help develop and flesh out characters, you're left with... not that. Now I get what they were going for, Ishida wants to have friends, and by the end, that's what he gets. But you can't just have these characters here only for that reason, it just seems like a waste, especially considering all their backstories that were just thrown away, albeit they were kind of delivered in a lame way, which each having little more than a chapter and narration, but still they were good backstories. Characters like Nauka, without her backstory it just makes her seem like she wants to be there for the sake of being friends. In fact, no, it's worse. One of the things I liked about the manga was how they explained why they did something. All the bullies, all the bad guys were fleshed out. Usually they explained right after they did it, which I'm not a big fan of, but hey, they explained anyway and that's got to be in the step in the right direction in terms of anime. What I mean is that they explained the bullying. 
yeah, the one-dimensional characters that, that's just there to push the plot forward and that's about it, they explore that person. They give an explanation on why that happened. So scenes like this flip out on the bridge was justified because as he heard all their backstories, he started to feel more guilty. So when the cat was out of the bag that he bullied Shoko when they were younger, he curses them all out so they can leave so they won't have to be near him again. In the movie, yeah, there's a little of that, but it's almost none compared to the manga. They really just seem to get rid of the whole guilt theme, don't they? Like when Shoko would commit suicide and Ishia saves her, what goes through his head is all the things he wished he could have done to prevent this, going all the way back to him not meeting her. It's the same mindset that she had. In the movie, it's not there, so we can imply that's what she's thinking, but like I said, guilt just seems to be absent from the whole ordeal. Back to Nauka. Because they opted out her backstory, her motives don't make a lot of sense. Why does she want to be near Ishii? Why does she still bully Shoko? In the movie, who knows, she's just a bitch. In the manga, she likes Ishia and was inspired by him and did the same things he did, which was bully Shoko. Still not good enough for you? They also explain her regret she has for bullying her. Granted, she goes back to bullying her a few minutes later, but not as much as before. At the end, when they were finished with the movie, they all worked together and came together, and from that came closer with each other, which makes the ending more justifiable, as it shows she wants to apologize and be friends with everyone too. While the movie's ending makes up with everyone, Nauka is still an asshole, and when that scene happens in the movie, it's just like, fuck you, you're still a bitch, why do you want to be friends, what makes you nice all of a sudden? Now that we're at the ending, you might think that I might hate the movie ending and prefer the manga's ending, as was probably the biggest change out of it. But no, I actually prefer the movie's ending. The manga's ending went a bit too far. It seemed to be a bit happy for such a grounded story like this. As they were making the movie, we got to see and hear what they liked and wanted to do when they graduated. Tomo wanted to go to film school, Satoshi wanted to be a teacher, Miyoko wants to be a fashion model, Naoko wanted to be a fashion designer, Yutsuri wanted to be a photographer, and Shoko a hairdresser. Sounds great, right? Well, it goes the extra mile of showing them doing that. Like, it's not a matter of them saying that and it fades to white with them laughing. No, right out of high school, Miyoko's a model, Naoka's leaving for Tokyo to design, Tomo's just leaving for film school. The only one that doesn't go off and do what they want is Yutsuri, but that's only because she's still in school, but she also won something for her photography. I really like the idea of them wanting to go off to do these things, but showing them that they successfully achieved their goals feels a bit too much and a little rushed. Like, there's no way they did all this right out of high school. Maybe in Japan's economy, but I don't know. I wanted the manga to show a lot, but I find this a bit too much. It's also a little depressing because everyone goes off to do what they want except for Ishida. He just stays at home and doesn't really know what to do. I find that a little sad for him. The movie's ending I like, it's more realistic and shows Shoko wanting to bring everybody together after all the hard times, which did happen in the manga, but in the movie it takes its time with showing her wanting to fix all this, while in the manga it just happens. I also like how the mothers make up in the movie too. That would have worked out so much better if they just showed that scene in the beginning where Shoko got a haircut by Ishika's mother and refused to cut her hair the way her mother wanted it and instead shows the way Shoko wanted it, which started this whole feud between them and they made up by getting drunk together. Yeah, the movie they make up by letting their get her hair cut. That's a great idea and a great throwback to the beginning if only they showed the beginning. They hint at it a little in the opening, but that's really it. Oh, and also, um, her mother is never explored either. She's just a bitch that becomes fine in the end. Even with all these criticisms I've made throughout this video, I understand what they were doing. They wanted to make a romance focusing on these two characters, and it's done great. Kione's touch is all over this movie, and it's done to a T. 
I'm really glad to see them doing romance feel stories again. I complained at one point that they need to stop with the romance and do more comedies, but now that that's getting saturated, I feel it's time for them to go back to romances because romance anime focusing on just two people is somewhat coming back, and this movie proves that they still got it. In fact, I feel like this film should have won Best Directing. Hear me out. There's a somewhat minor debate about which is better, Kionokashi or Your Name. Personally, I feel that Your Name is the better one, but I understand why it didn't win Best Picture. Your Name got over 300 million worldwide, and A Silent Voice got over 20 million. So, both films are good, Your Name already won in terms of popularity and money. So the award for Best Animation went for A Silent Voice, and Your Name got Best Directing. And while I do agree with that decision and wouldn't want to change it, I feel like A Silent Voice has better directing while Your Name has better animation. Your Name was downright beautiful with its art style and movement, but its directing didn't really have much meaning to it. Oh sure, you can draw some connections, but you can also draw those same connections in his other films. While a silent voice has particular and precise moments that help convey what the characters are feeling, with your name, I didn't really feel for the characters as much as I did with a silent voice, at least the main characters. Overall, I like a silent voice, 8, maybe 8.5 eight out of 10. Without these characters' backstories, it just feels so wasted in potential. I don't mind changing the ending or taking out the movie, but at least do something with them other than a sentence of backstory and then just being there. But at the same time, I would also rate the manga 8 out of 10 because the way they develop the characters is just so bland and cliche. The story is too good for this type of execution. If only we can find a middle between these two. The story of the manga and the way the film tells a story. If only we could mix and match, we could have the perfect romance. 